Next, we're going to show you our out-of-bounds plays from the sidelines. Play number one, our stack play, has our center taking the ball out of bounds and the rest of the team lining up in a straight line or a stack formation. Our two guards are at the ends and our forwards are lined up in the middle. On slapping the ball, the, forward, the guard closest to the ball is going to break towards the basket but will end up in back court. The guard in the back will break towards the basket but will also end up in back court. This is our basket here. The two forwards are breaking opposite directions. The back forward breaks this way, the front forward breaks this way. And in effect, they set screens for the guards. So when the center slaps the ball, we have four players moving at the same time. The back, forward, the back guard breaks this way, the front guard breaks here, both players ended up in back court, ready to receive a pass, like so. Either guard receiving the pass is in a good position to bring the ball down and start the offense. The center on his pass will make a quick break to the basket and either guard can look for that easy shot if he happens to break open. This is our stack play or play number one from the sideline. Another play we can run from the sidelines, often run from back court, but it could be run from anywhere on the sidelines, is what we call our box play or play number two. Our center takes the ball out of bounds. The rest of the players line up in what we call our box formation. Our two guards are diagonal from each other and our two forwards are diagonal from each other. This is our basket. We're going in this, this direction. So when the guard slaps the ball, both forwards are screening for the guard closest to them. So this forward is screening for this guard. This forward is screening for this guard. So guard closest to the ball is breaking the basket, looking for that easy layup. This guard is coming in the back court looking to get the ball in safely in bounds. If we get the ball safely in bounds, then this guard is going to break back here so we can start our offense. And again, the center will break here and we have the option of looking for that easy layup. So this is play number two from the sidelines, our box play. Here we're set up for sidelines out of bounds play number three. Instead of the center taking the ball out of bounds, this time we're going to have the guard take the ball out of bounds, call play number three. When he slaps the ball, he'll be trying to get the ball into this guard right here. If he does, the forward will break up high, center will break out. While this action has taken place, the forward on the strong side will set a back pick. This guard will go to the basket and he'll be looking for the scoring pass from the center. This is play number three. Another option is if you can't get the ball into this guard here, he goes ahead and breaks and we make this pass directly there. Play number three. Sidelines play number four, sidelines out of play number four, could, be, could fall in the category of a special play, much like hammer or chop, in that we're going for that last second shot. So we call this one spread or play number four. Our guard takes the ball out of bounds, slaps the ball. When he slaps the ball, we do basically a post split, like so. It's possible that we can make a direct pass in here. If not there, we're, again, we're probably looking for that last second three. The center comes up, sets a pick on this guard's man as he comes around. And this is the most common pass right here. He takes the ball, drive, and can feed it off for the three, the three, take the three, or, or get the layup, depending on the game situation. So this is what we call spread. Play number four 
It's when we need a basket with just a few seconds left at either the end of the game or end of a time period from the sidelines. Play number four. One of the things that we need to be prepared for as a team is how to defeat and combat the full court press. The full court press is defeated best by working together as a team and not trying to uh, allow one person you know, to try to dribble through five people, work together as a team, passing the ball crisply from one player to the other with a plan. And our plan will start off with the center taking the ball out of bounds, and he will get the ball into one of our guards. Our two forwards will be designated, one as a button hook player and the other as a sideline player. Both of them will break immediately down the middle of the court, and the sideline player will break to the sideline as the ball is inbounded, and the other player will button hook back to the ball as the ball is inbounded. So let's take a look here. Here's our center with the ball, passes the ball into the guard. This will be a sideline forward is breaking down here. Once, once the pass is made, he breaks to the sideline looking for the pass. The other forward, again, once the ball's made here, he's passed there, he's breaking down court. Once the ball goes there, he button hooks back looking for the pass to the middle. So these are the two most critical passes that we have to complete in order to break the press. So this looks pretty simple, looks pretty easy. If we can do that, we actually break the press probably 99% of the time. Now, it's not going to be that easy all the time. What's going to happen is there's going to be defense here and we need to reverse the ball. So let's take a look at that. So here we have the guard with the ball, who has just received the ball inbounds from the center. The forward has broken to the sideline, and this forward has broken here <clears throat> to the middle, button hook back. The guard decides that that would be too risky of a pass, so he elects to pass it back to the center. The center is going to pass it immediately to this guard on this side, and then this man becomes the sideline, this man becomes the button hook. And we have the same options over here, and if we're able to make that pass, then again, 90% of the time, we've broken the press. And that usually opens up pretty easily when we initiate this pass. Sometimes the center will find that this man here is playing kind of halfway in between and making it difficult to make this pass. He may have to put the ball on the court for one or two times to draw this man in to make this pass. But other than that, it works pretty simply just this way, and it, it works to break the press. A code word we have for watch the clock, or the clock is counting down, is 11. So a player calls out 11, 11, it just means beware of the clock, or coach is calling at 11. So a, another action we have, or another play we have, is play 11. And this is a desperation play, play 11, to get the last second basket. Probably we're behind, and there's just a, three seconds left, and we got the ball out of bounds. We got the run of the baseline. Center takes the ball out of bounds. Instead of passing it in here, this guard jumps here. We make that pass. This guard is going to be a good baseball thrower, and he's going to throw the length of the court. We're setting the pick here, and we're going to get this kind of action with this pass, or he's going to throw it all the way here. Time permitting, 
we may have action here where we have a two on one. This is play number 11. It's a desperation play, a full court, long play where we take a uh, baseball pass, assuming we have the run of the baseline. When we make this pass from here to here, that's legal as long as we have the run of the baseline, play number 11. 